he calls me and he goes, I've got someone else on the line. How about, you want to meet, this is Tom Cruise on the line. So it's a three-way call and they say, how would you like to be part of the mission family? For me, it was as good as it gets. Welcome to Story and Craft. Now, here's your host, Mark Preston. Well, hello. How are you? Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark Preston. And uh, today, a really great episode with an incredibly talented actor. I mean, I mean, going back 17 years ago, I saw his name on a call sheet on a project I was working on. And ever since then, I've been following his career, the uh, TV projects, the movies he's been in. I'm talking about Shea Wiggum, uh, one of those actors, no matter what he does, he always just knocks it out of the park. Uh, he's been in a whole lot of TV and film projects like Perry Mason, Joker, uh, Vice, Sicario, The Day of the Soldado, American Hustle, Silver Linings Playbook, The Wolf of Wall Street, and uh, he's even got a recurring role in the Mission Impossible franchise. You can see him right now, though, in the Stars miniseries, Gaslit. He plays G. Gordon Liddy in this miniseries about the Nixon Watergate scandal. He delivers what I think is just an award-winning performance. He just knocks it out of the park. Once again, uh, Gaslit is the miniseries. A lot of great performances in this. Uh, Julia Roberts, I mean, without a doubt. Also an award-worthy performance. Also, don't forget about Story and Craft pod.com the website story and craft pod.com uh social media links you want to follow me or the show sign up for the newsletter um send me a message it's all right there story and craft pod.com if you would of course uh got a number of episodes for you to check out just pop back into the library leave a review uh definitely love the uh, great notes i've been receiving as of late Certainly appreciate you being here, and uh, let's get after it. Today, it's Shea Wiggum Day, right now, on Story and Craft. How are you doing today, man? Oh, good, man. I'm, I'm doing good. Thank you. It's kind of funny. I was talking to my kids earlier about this. The first time I became aware of you was seeing your name on a call sheet for Faith of My Fathers, <laughs> way back in the day, fifteen year, uh, 17 years ago, I think. Uh, but we didn't have a scene yeah. together, but I, I saw your name. I was like... The Shea guy, who is he? And ever since then, every time I see your name in a credit or see, I'm like, I, I you know, I wanted to talk to that guy. <laughs> they had they, they had me shooting scenes over to Catholic Girls School, uh, and uh, I don't know where they shot your. I think y'all were at a studio, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you know the thing I I think I remember about uh, Faith in My Fathers was uh, the uh, the Hurricane Katrina. Remember that it just hit, and that was one of the first things that that had come back. We were, you know, we were. Uh, going in there to film yeah that's you know what god i totally forgot that was after katrina i just that was all a little bit of a blur i'm originally from texas but i've been in new orleans on and off southern california but on and off in new orleans about 20 plus years or so so where are you located right now now right now now i'm in los angeles i'm in uh you know in in los angeles here i i I was in new york for a long time and then, uh, you know, followed some work out here. So Now, are you from uh, New York originally, or did you find your way to New York? No, no. Originally from uh, born in Florida, uh, born in Tallahassee, Florida. My parents were going to school there. And at Florida State, my father was a, was a quarterback at, uh, at Florida State. Really? And uh, Yeah. And my mom, and then he, he got, a, got his degree, and I mean, he got a, a law degree. He was kind of a John John Grisham small town lawyer in uh, a place called uh, Sanford, Florida, in Lake Mary, Florida. Really, Lake Mary. My mother was a librarian at a at a, at a at a high school there. So, were you an athlete as well, or was it was it always uh, 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 creative? Yeah, no, uh, I, I was okay. I was okay at it, uh, but my father, you know, he wasn't. He wasn't a, a jock, so to speak. He he raised. He was a he's a he's a voracious reader, and of course, my mother's a librarian, so um, he raised my brother Jack and I basically on the poets and the thinkers. So it was Byron, Keats, Shelley. It was Ingersoll, you know, just some thinkers. So he he uh, he wasn't you know he used that to. The, uh, football, I guess, to get his, uh, you know, his, his degree for the state. Was this kind of your um, course of study when you got off to college, you know, theater or, uh, or did you, or was something else your objective? Well, I, 
I, I, I don't know where you're from in Texas, but I kicked around and found, found my way for a minute into Tyler, Texas. Mm-hmm. East Texas. Yeah, uh, I got a lot of family uh, out there. Yeah, I was there for a minute. And um, I auditioned. I, I started doing plays there. Um, you know, my, my, thinking back, I guess my father, uh, my father, you know, really, he would show me, you know, show me films. He loved Brando and he loved, you know, De Niro. And he didn't know anything about anything as far as that goes. But he lo- he, 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 he would say to me, you know, this, this guy, they say, is the best actor on the planet or this, you know, uh, you know. And so I remember that in early, early days watching, you know, uh, De Niro or Pacino and Scarface or Ridley Scott. I mean, uh, yeah, Ridley's uh, uh, Alien, you know. So it was just that. And then I, I had a fascination with it. And, and, and I, 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 <laughs> I, um, I went down to San Antonio, Texas to audition um, for uh, some, of the, some of the schools, BU, Boston, uh, and uh, SUNY Purchase. And I got into SUNY Purchase. And I got, I just wanted to be in New York. So I made my way to, to SUNY Purchase and I got, as, as you get lucky in this business, sometimes. You... I, I think, I think that's true. I think sometimes uh, there, it's the incalculable thing being at the right place, right time, right idea, right then, you know, but what took you to uh, Tyler? Well, I played a little bit of tennis and I, I had like a, a, a scholarship a scholarship there for that but as i like to say it, it, it was very qu- quickly i i knew that i was out of my depth yeah. uh <laughs> that, yeah. so i turned that scholarship and i started taking uh prose and poetry reading courses there and so we would just read poetry and we would read and i always i started just feathering in performance based monologues that i shouldn't and the teacher and the professor was like, you know, this is a this is a reading guy. You're doing monologues, and why don't you come try out for the theater? And I tried out for a Sam Shepard play. Oh, real okay. Lie of the, yeah, and I did Lie of the Mind, and it just opened up my world, man. Yeah, I always am envious whenever I hear interviews with actors who uh, had a chance to act with them or to have to actually be living legend kind of like that, you know. Oh man, I remember um, uh, Jeff Nichols, who I did take shelter with, and Mike Shannon. Jeff had Jeff um, used Sam in a couple of his films, and I used to just pepper uh, Jeff Nichols, um, you know, about Sam Shepard. And Mike Shannon went. I remember Mike said, yeah. Michael said, um, I went to this party, and Sam was across the room, and I just, I just, I stared at Sam. You know, I didn't, I couldn't even, I didn't have the balls to go up and, and even say anything. It was Sam Shepard, you know, and I, I lived in Chelsea at one point, right after I got out of school, I lived in Chelsea and I was slinging coffee in Chelsea, right next to the Chelsea hotel where he and Patty Smith, he was doing his writing and she was, you know, they were living there. So it had all this history for me with Shepard. It's funny you mentioned um, Michael Shannon. I, I was speaking with uh, Ariel Vroman who directed him in, um, Iceman. And I was like, how did I miss this movie? This is such a great movie. And then uh, in Waco, he's just such a great chest. I'll drink his Kool-Aid. Whatever he's in, I'm going to go see it without a doubt. But uh, but you, man, I tell you, I got to tell you, that was just spot on, man. I lo- that Waco performance was just, I-, I thought that was such a great miniseries. You know, it was the doubt. Dow- was John and Drew Dowdle and Mike and I, you know, Mike and I have such a history. We go back to my first film ever, Tigerland. Mike did two scenes in it. And so um, I remember thinking, you know, there was all these young, young guys on, on Tigerland that were about to kind of pop. And Mike and I, we early days, we're doing a ton of research. We're traveling or Colin Farrell's driving for the first time. In the States, a station wagon, Mike and I find ourselves in the back of the state, very, very back of the station wagon, you know, um, I remember drinking with him and talking about Chicago. And and that was the early, that was the embryonic stages of uh, us, uh, our, our careers. And then we've gone on to do about eight or nine things together. So when Waco popped up, you know, Mike and I basically like have guns, we'll travel, we'll do whatever, whatever he's doing, I'll do or vice versa. You know? That is very, that is very cool. And I noticed with that and also with Gaslit um, and a few other times, you've, 
with, with movies where you're playing a real person, you know, you know, you're you're portraying somebody. Do, do you prefer that, or do you find it to be more challenging because you want to get it right, or how do you, how do you approach that? That's a good question. Uh, I I uh, yes, I think there is a an inherent. Uh, you know, a uh, challenge to get it right. And I think there's a fear also that can be a great motivator, you know, to make sure they you know it's scared. Some of us take Liddy, for instance, Liddy, you know, when I first uh, was asked by Matt Ross to do this and Sam Esmail, I, um, you know, it scared me. It scared me. And you want to go to those things that scare you. And I, you know, at time I said, uh, you know, am I the guy to do this? And Matt said, yeah, you know, and I, you know, I, I thought I could, figure him out but i knew it was going to take a, a, a big effort you know huge effort so you know you start when you start with something like liddy you you, you know the greatest hits of liddy especially from the 90s on mm-hmm. yeah you know what i mean you, you got you got leary you know but and you got and then he started going on letterman and conan o'brien and but that's not this that's not what i really focused on um i wanted i was more concerned with you know 73 74 once he become became one of the white house plumbers and um so yeah yeah man a big undertaking when you were preparing for it was it liddy to me always seemed like an imposing figure Mm -hmm. but he seemed to be Mm -hmm. just a um kind of conflicted because this guy who was endless kind of dedication to whatever he believed in he had a real like uh yeah, I think I think Liddy's the ultimate zealot, you know, and it, it 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 he is the ultimate. He he wants. There's two things with G, with with Gordon. He well, there's a, a myriad of things, but it starts with a deep insecurity. It's he's it's a deep insecurity, and and it he he talks about those are his words, not mine. And Will his auto his autobiography that I that was where I I got I gleaned a lot of stuff from. And he talks about so you start there, and he 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 work. He's you'll see in episode seven. There's eight episodes to Gaslit. You'll see in episode seven. Lydia's basically lit, worked his whole life to test his will, a testament of will, and he gets what he what he asks for. And he's the only one that will do the time. He's the only one that gets a 23 year sentence and says, I want maximum security prison. So he goes in there to test his will. And ultimately, and I don't want to ruin things for people, but ultimately you'll see what that, what the ramifications of that. So, and also juxtaposed to that, all, all, Gore, all Liddy wants is because it becomes from a place of insecurity is just to be seen by the king, just to be seen by Nixon. But isn't it ironic that Nixon also his own insecurities did him in ultimately? You know. Uh, oh, oh yeah. I mean, it's the tapes that did him in. You know what I mean? It's that he taped everything. He was paranoid, and so yeah. So when, going back to when you were you were in school, when did you say this is this thing I'm going to do, or were you kind of like, okay, I'm playing with this, but I gotta have a nine to five in my mind? No, no, no. I don't think you can do that. Uh, for me, I didn't have a safety net. Once I made the decision to go and to go to New York, you know that was a SUNY Purchase is a is a uh, conservatory, so it's four years mandatory. So it, it, for me, it was what I needed. I needed, you know, you're doing voice, speech, you're studying Chekhov, Ibsen, Sh- Shakespeare, and you know, and I got under a woman named Yulali Noble there, who used to do, you know, was on was off Broadway with Pacino, and she, she was a force to be reckoned with. And, um, she chose to teach as opposed to chose a life in the theater. She wanted to teach. She sat on the right hand of Meisner and, um, and, and, and Strasbourg. And, uh, so uh, Strasbourg. So she, she was just, she taught me, she laid the foundation for what it is to be an artist for me. And that is seek the truth out. And 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 no stone unturned, and to try to truly go as deep as you can to find those characters, you know. So I I I, I draw on her all the time with Liddy or you know whatever you know whatever it may be. Would you recommend um, 
I know some people listen to the show, actors who, you know, younger or just getting going. And like for myself, I was I was an odd cookie, man. I was in, in high school. I was like, I want to do radio. Ever since I was like seven years old. And I didn't realize ultimately what it was, was performance, theater of the mind. But it was, it was still performance. But it seemed to be the most accessible thing. The idea of being an actor, I was like, people actually, I don't even know how you get into that. But I can see how you get into radio. And fast forward, as I was doing that, I got into acting. And I started picking up a class here or there, a book grab a DVD, Uta Hagen or whatever. And um, do you do you feel like it is best if if someone wants to act, if they want to perform, whether it be on stage or on camera, to go into a program in college or more, or, uh, or just kind of chart out their own path? Uh, uh, what do you think is probably best for someone who wants to get into this? Well, I, I, I mean, for me, I, I, I don't, to be honest, I don't know that there is one right way. You know what I mean? Um, for me, uh, Mark, I still hold on to it that it's a craft. Um, I, I enjoy, I enjoy the discovery and, um, the research, the, the, the building of the character almost more than filming the character. I, I, I love to find those in the difficulty, the more difficult it is for me, the more enjoyable at times. But, to, and so, I, I needed it. I don't think there's one way to do it, but I, I needed it. And, um, and I'm, I'm glad, ultimately, I'm glad that I, that I did that because it, it enabled me to, to come out and to start a theater company in New York City and, you know, fight that fight that it, that it takes to, to become an actor. Putting this show together, I was like, I'm going to kind of pick up on a couple of things maybe I missed. I was reminded just going to IMDb and just kind of skimming through. I was like, holy crap, I forgot he, he did all this. I've seen all these things. I, I do have to admit, though, I've not seen most of the Fast and Furious movies. I've seen a couple of them. The ninth one, did you have any scenes with Helen Mirren by any chance of Kurt Russell? No, no. My stuff on Fast was, uh, was mainly with Paul Walker. I was tight with Paul, and we had an adversary situation going on and um and then you know they brought me back for a, a couple uh, when he died i had we had just filmed right before that i remember it was thank right before thanksgiving and dev is just completely as you know imagine devastation and uh, so my stuff was really with paul and then in the last one uh uh, uh justin uh brought me back with Vin and they, we, I just did one scene and it kind of was an honor, an honor, an honor of Paul. Um, now, now going back to another, you know, real life kind of deal, uh, vice. Um, I just saw don't look up Adam McKay. Uh, and of course he directed this. I think he wrote it also. <laughs> um, what was that like being on, on, on vice was now I'm curious about the Adam McKay experience. What's that like? Yeah. You know, man, for me, um, when I just for people, the actors that are listening, it, for for myself, it's all it it it's about directors. I've wanted, to, I've really kind of, I told my the people that represent me, I want to work with the best directors because that's going to get you to the best material. And Adam McKay was at the top of my uh, right at the top of my list, and um, that's why, like Fast and Furious, you go, well, why did you do that, Justin Lin? I'd seen Justin's early work, so when McKay approached me. Um, that, and that that was really uh, that happened very quickly. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for that. McKay called me and said something had happened to an actor, and would I come on board? And I was doing something else at the time. I think Boardwalk Empire. And when I so they let me come on board, and McKay really let me uh, really let me build that character. It was, he's not in. I'm not in much of it, but it was uh, with Amy and with Christian Bale, who I've done, who I admire enormously. Oh, he, he did it. He knocked it out of the park, with, uh, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, but what's it like being directed? He definitely is uh, just, I think, like, uh, don't look up. I mean, it was such a, I, I loved it. I thought it was a great movie. But what, what was the experience like with him? The, the first word that comes to mind about McKay is his intelligence. He's literally the, the smartest guy, probably the smartest guy in every room he walks in. He loves actors. That's why you get Christian coming back time and time again um, with him. And he allows you to really, it was a very, um, 
uh, I, the experience was was phenomenal to me. Um, that, yeah, he, I mean, he he lets you run, and then if he sees something, he'll come in and uh, you know say think about this or if if but if you're if you're in it, he he loves what you're doing. He he really lets you run with it. I, I'm I, I love him. Kind of the Mount Rushmore people I'd love to talk to who I think are just incredibly talented. Sam Rockwell, I think just there's something about that guy, just everything he's in. Who are you mostly uh, connecting with in scenes in Vice? Were you uh, with Sam Rockwell? I, I, yeah, please oh, pardon no, my memory. My no, kids no, no, make fun of me with, all the time. That's okay. That's okay. I was with Amy Adams um, and, uh, and, and Christian. Uh, that was mainly, that was my stuff, basically. It was just Amy and so, and I'd done, um, I had done American Hustle with Amy. Um, so, you know, that was, that was fun going back in with her again, you know. You talk about the, uh, the directors, uh, David O. Russell. I mean, you, that and uh, American, uh, American Hustle, Silver Linings Playbook. That's, yeah. I can kind of see that, th- that thread now, what you're talking about. Uh, you know, man, I, uh, when I got on Boardwalk Empire, um, uh, that was the first time I'd worked with Scorsese. And so I go, Scorsese was coming to the television for the first time. And it was the boy, it was the guys from The Sopranos, Tim Van Patten and, and Terry Winter. And Van Patten quickly became like my closest of the close friends. And so when I got on that, I was like, I asked them, I said, if I get the opportunity while I'm doing this show to work with any of the greats directing wise, would, would you, will you allow that? And they said, absolutely. So I went on a murderer's row of directors while on Boardwalk Empire. I mean, I went with Scorsese and then I did um, uh, Wolf of Wall Street with Marty again. I did uh, uh, Savages with Oliver Stone. Um, I, I hit Terry Malick, Werner Herzog, and one of the and 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 uh, David O. Russell twice during Boardwalk Empire. So Boardwalk was, you know, the sun, man, and everything was, you know, uh, kind of orbiting around that film wise, but coming back real quick, I want to answer your question about Sam Rockwell. You're not wrong about Rockwell. He is in my age group. I always felt like it was, it was what Phil Sweet Seymour Hoffman was doing. Um, uh, Heath Ledger at the time of his passing, I think Colin Farrell was doing, he's doing amazing stuff. And Sam is someone that Sam and I go back and forth. Uh, the respect I have for him is through the roof. Matter of fact, I'm going to see his play next week in, uh, American, American Buffalo in New York. And coming back to Gaslit, what, how did that come together for you? You know, man, I, uh, I was doing mission. I'm doing mission impossible seven and I'm about to eight number eight and so i'm sitting in london and they say matt ross who directed um uh captain fantastic he's called he wants you to be a part of this and i had done homecoming with julia roberts and sam esmael that was the so they they knew my work so um when when sam when uh when matt ross said i want shay wiggum shay wiggum to play liddy julia and, and esmael both went to bat for me so that's how that came to be. And then the conversation started. And so, so, uh, Tom, so what I, so I, I'm doing, uh, mission impossible seven it was taken, taken a long time because during a pandemic, we were trying to figure out how do you, how do you do this thing at the same time? And so I went to, to cruise and, uh, and, uh, Macquarie. And I said, listen, I have a chance to go play G Gordon Liddy and thing. And, and they, and I, I was still filming and they go, you know what? We're going to, we're going to figure out, we're going to figure this out. So Cruz was kind enough to get me out in order to have the time for the research to do Liddy. So that's how it came out. Oh, out. okay. So he, he structured the uh, shooting to kind of get you all locked, locked in and all your shit scenes are done before you headed off to do Gaslit or you went and did Gaslit and came back? No, no, I went and gas. I did Gaslit and I owed like, I owed a couple of, I owed a couple of scenes from Mitch. So I'm doing uh, in Gaslit. You'll see once we start the in episode two, we start we're in, the, we're in the Howard Johnsons and we start the whole bungling of the burglary. And so I had to do that. Jump on. I, it's an embarrassment of riches for an actor because I had to do that shoot for about 12 hours, go to LAX, jump on a plane, fly to Birmingham, England. And then we shot 
the rest of uh, Mission 7 for me. And then came back immediately to the airport and, and finished up Gaslit. A tremendous amount of fun. And you were talking about how you got Gaslit. And Julia Roberts, you said, went to bat for you. How does it feel uh, when that kind of – when your career evolved to the point where – you're not auditioning nearly as much. You're actually having people say, yeah, we, we want Shay to be in this thing. It's How did that feel when that started transitioning? Was it an awkward kind of a feeling or did it feel kind of like a natural progression for you? It's it's not awkward. It's it's a, it's a nice feeling. Let's put it that way. It's nice to have people oh, I've seen. Oh, that's why like Mission 7 came about. Uh, uh, Macquarie had seen Homecoming and what I'd done in that. And then... Uh, there was a mutual respect between the two of us, and he said, "You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna write something for you in the next Mission Impossible. That's January of like 2018, and so the whole calendar year goes by of 2018, and I'm like, this is never gonna, I, you know, this is never gonna happen. I'm sure. And December, I get a call from uh, a text from Macquarie, and it's from like a four four number plus four four, and it said, "Is this still you, McHugh?" And I, so it was like, a, it was like at a mission impossible. I go, it is. <laughs> and he goes, I'm calling from a UK number pick up when I do. So I go, I didn't, I didn't know what it was about. So I'm, I'm here at the house and I, and, and he, he calls me and he goes, how would you like to come be, before I do that, Shay, I've got someone else on the line. How about you want to meet, this is Tom Cruise on the line. So it's a three-way call and they say, how would you like to be part of the mission family? And you know, for me, it was as good as it gets. So, you know, the homecoming got that home, you know, uh, you know, uh, boardwalk got a lot of these things for me. And it's, it, it, it's a testament, like for anyone that that's out there that wants to be an actor, that it, it's about the work work begets work. I think, you know, cause I'm a dynamic. Man, I don't do any social media. I don't. I've never been on Facebook. I've never uh, tweeted in my life. I've never. So it's about the work for me um, of trying to just put together characters, man. That's you know that's such a funny thing because I I'm, I'm very much the same way. I was discussing it with my kids. I said if my gig was not somewhat dependent upon social media, I wouldn't even mess with it to be honest with you. But but the, there's a younger generation that. You know, having hundreds of thousands or a million or two followers could potentially impact the career. I, I do have to say one movie that I've saw, I only saw about half of it, but uh, that To the Stars, again, with <laughs> J.D. Evermore in there. That was, that, I, I, that was one of those movies that was sitting, sitting in the DVR and whatever came up, came up and, you know having kids things happen like oh shit i still haven't watched that movie yet um but uh oh. where did you where did y'all shoot that film we were in uh en enid oklahoma and i remember you know i'll get so from time to time i'll get young filmmakers uh, you know ask me to come do a couple of scenes in an independent they have no money it's in the middle of nowhere and i remember martha she approached me and i i uh I just I I loved her spirit and and the producers on it and so I I flew and did a couple of scenes I think it's a beautiful film I think it, it, it was it was one of those things like uh, I remember watching going I need to save it need to come back and watch it but you know in the world and doing what I'm doing here and I'm also acting and doing voiceover it's it's like yeah. watching and consuming is such a small part of my day it seems like I have to start building a hierarchy of things like I definitely want to watch that's why Gaslit will be my binge this weekend. Your folks, obviously, they they weren't in the business, of course. But your family is anybody else uh, in, in acting, or do you have any kids? Uh, that done? Uh, yeah, my uh, yeah, my uh, my one son of mine wants to be a filmmaker, and uh, my daughter is she's she's doing very well. She she's an act. She wants to be an actress, and I'm letting her that be her experience, and letting her, you know. Um, I, I very much believe in that. And she's about to start something really cool um, with Seth MacFarlane next. So uh, who does family? Well, that has to be fun. Yeah. Yeah he's, um, yeah. he's a genius, that guy. So, yeah. It's so funny. I was just, just talking to Neil deGrasse Tyson a little while back and they were talking about Cosmos. And he said, he just happened to bump into bump into him. And he was like, Hey, you know, I got a little extra money sitting around. You want to 
do something with Cosmos by chance? <laughs> you know, it seems like Seth MacFarlane would just be kind of a cool guy to, to collaborate pretty, with. He's pretty smart, huh? Oh, indeed, indeed. Yeah. So, so you have those two kids, you say? Uh, no, no, I have four kids. I got four. Oh, four. Kids. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got. Are they? Uh, are they kind of off on their own now, or are they still? Uh, uh, t- they're here, man. I, we, you know, we've got our hands full. <laughs> yeah, I've got. I'm. I'm at that point where I got. I got a 19 year old who's just coming back home from college, and one who's starting college next year, and I got one who's going to wrap up in a couple of, high school in a couple of years. I'm going. Oh my god, I need to busy myself because this is going to be rough when they leave. <laughs> <You know>? uh, <laughs> so the. Now, as far as what you're working on right now, what do you have yeah. um, now? Gaslets in in the can, and uh, yeah. it's been aired. Um, what else do you have co- coming up in the pipe? Well, I'm I'm doing Perry Mason, the second season for HBO, and I leave for Mission Impossible Eight in Europe uh, in about in a couple of weeks. So, you know, we'll we'll uh, get back in there with Tom and, and Macquarie and that gang and. I, I love I love doing that. It's amazing. I mean, those two guys are like they're cinephiles. They love cinema, and um, that's been a great experience for me. Hey, it's not half bad going to Europe and you know running around and not, what I imagine would be like uh, when I was a kid. I always wanted to. If I said if I act, I want to be in a James Bond movie because it seems like they get to go to fun locations and do cool things. Yeah. That um, uh, does your does your family come along with you, or is it just kind of your your uh, solo knocking out the gig? Uh, you know, man, usually I'm, I'm pretty, pretty much, I'm, I'm, I'm in deep with what I'm doing the character wise, but, and they didn't on, 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 um, on mission because of the pandemic, uh, that, that, that changed a lot. That changed a lot of things. Um, uh, but you know, when I go over there to do eight, I may, I may have my daughter, Georgia and my son, Marlon, they may come over and, you know, see. Having a daughter deciding to go into acting, um, you've seen all the cautionary tales. Was there what was a piece of advice you gave her to hopefully get her onto a right track? Do the work, do the work, you know. And you know, acting has an amazing litmus test. I find that if if you really want to do it, you'll you'll know because the downtimes are are. You wouldn't work, you wouldn't wish them on your worst enemy. They're they're that difficult. But if you can survive that, that's where your stories are told during the difficult periods. You know what I mean? The old adage, oh, it's who you know. And that's not true. You can't you can't just give somebody a gig. Nobody's going to do that. I can't go to Martin Scorsese and say, give my daughter a gig. You can't do it. You know what I mean? You you have to hone your craft and. And, and love what you do. I I think. Otherwise, you won't stay in the business. You just won't do it. It's too difficult. You know. The people that I know that have succeeded, I think that I, I think they're earning a living doing it and doing well. All seem to really enjoy it and cannot imagine doing anything else. It's just it's just there's no way they would be doing anything else. Um, is there anything that's on the uh, I don't want to call it a bucket list, but something, be it director, director or directors you want to work with, any actors, any type of projects that you hope come down the pike sometime soon or sometime within your career. Yeah. You know who I would love to work with is James Mangold. I love Mangold's work every time out. And that's from Copland all the way to Ford versus Ferrari. I love, and I'm very, I'm looking forward. Boyd Holbrook is a friend of mine and he's doing the new, um, Indiana Jones. And I, I love Mangold's work, you know? So I, yeah, I'd love to work with him. Um, I'm trying to place your character in Sicario and I don't know why I'm having a difficult time doing that. Oh, that's uh, but, okay. were you, uh, but were you, uh, had, did you have a chance to, uh, spend time with Josh Brolin or? Uh, I know I know Josh a little bit. I, I know Benicio del Toro. He's a he's a, a a dear friend of mine. I know I love Josh. Uh, my yeah. Um, you know, again, that's just a world that I wanted to explore. When they asked me to come in and do that, I I uh, I jumped at the chance. I had done um, uh, I had done uh, what did I do with Benicio? I'd done something else with Benicio, and I knew him through the years and I, I think he's one of our best right there with you know all the names that I named Christian and um Bale and and then Sam Rockwell and all those guys. So I think you know what he what he's doing is incredible. 
So you you live in L.A. Uh, proper, or or do you split your time going living anywhere else? Or no, I live here now. I live here. Um, you know, try to get to New York as much as I can. I'm going to go, like I said, next week to see Rockwell's playing to see Macbeth, uh, Daniel Craig and Macbeth. And uh, oh, one of the things I do, uh, boy, I wrap up with everybody. I got seven questions I like to ask. It's just pure fun. Just a little bit of get to know you. Uh, okay. First question out of the gate is what is your favorite comfort food? That thing that uh, kind of brings you back. It may not be the healthiest thing, but something you just, you just love. Uh, I would say uh, a great spaghetti bolognese is my favorite favorite meal. If, I'm, if I got a death row, death row meal, I'm going spaghetti bolognese in a Napa cab. Uh, next question is if uh, you're going to sit down and have coffee, uh, three people, Living or not, you know, who would you like to sit down and talk story with for a few hours? Three people. Oh, man. Uh, this, uh, I would say, I would take the, you know what? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say uh, Sh- Percy Shelley, who is my favorite poet. Um, I would say, uh, I would say Brando. And I would like to sit with, um, I'd like to sit with Meryl Streep. I'd love to sit with her. You know, yeah, she's, and just, uh, she, I'd like that to talk like... to her. Actually, let me change that. Maybe to uh, Casal, because when she was dating Casal, that's what I spoke to De Niro quite a bit about on Silver Linings Playbook. You know, but anyway, sorry, I digress. No, 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 no. I, I love it. I love it. Um, now, next question is: When you were a kid, who was your uh, celebrity crush? When you were a young man. Oh, I would say Vera Fawcett in her one piece. I had a poster of her in my. <laughs> that poster's come up a few times in the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, next question. If you, Okay, one year on an exotic island. It's actually a nice getaway. You, you just don't have streaming or your cell phone or anything. You got one DVD available to you, one album. Uh, what are you bringing with you to the island? I'm bringing. I'm bringing the book. I am bringing, uh, maybe I'll bring a couple of Don Winslow books with me, The Force. Um, and um, I'm bringing, I'm bringing Nirvana, Nirvana's early work. You know? Very good, very good. <laughs> Bring me, up, the- bring me back to college right there. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, next question. If you have, a, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, perfect mm-hmm. day what are the component yeah. parts of a perfect well-executed day for you oh i'm starting with a i'm starting with a beautiful cup of coffee taking the kids to school uh because the stress hasn't kicked in yet um i'm uh, i'm going over to the guy that i work everything with a guy named tom draper who i put everything we we break everything open we call it the lab. We go over there and break all of stuff, and then uh, you know I'm 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 uh, maybe the wife's cooking, and I got a nice big Napa cab to end the day. You know, with yeah, you have me. I, I need to go to Whole Foods and pick one up tonight. Now you I got you, you got <laughs> me thirsty. Um, yeah. Now, last couple of questions, real quick. Yeah. Now, um, if you were not doing this, what would you derive joy from doing, career wise? You know, I probably would just be, I'd probably be in a small town, you know, maybe pumping gas somewhere, just something simple so I could meet, you know, be, talk to people and just have stories. I think that's a lost art, be able to have stories. Small kind of kind of its own version of living in the moment, you know. Maybe where you're of, from, out there in Texas somewhere. Yeah, Dallas. Now I do have family in Longview, though, and I know being a Tyler, you probably went at a bodacious barbecue once or twice out that way. Um, the last question: If you could jump into a DeLorean, uh, cruise back, you're 16 years old. You got a piece of advice you're going to give your 16 year old self, either to kind of get you on a little bit better track or bring a little bit more joy to your life or whatever have you. What what would that piece of advice be? Uh, don't think just because something is difficult and arduous that it's not going to be fun you know what i mean and i i i remember daniel day lewis one of the quotes one of the many quotes that i have 
is he's if someone said do you have you don't have any fun you don't seem like he goes never mistake he goes just because it appears to be difficult doesn't mean i'm not having fun on the floor in the set you know what i mean in character so i i i that's what i would say i i think anything worth it is gonna be it's gonna be tough it's gonna be you know so i yeah well, thank you very much. Best of luck to you, and hopefully I'll have a chance to catch up down the line, and uh, I certainly appreciate your time, my friend. Listen, thank you for doing this. All right, there you go, Shay Wiggum. What a talented guy. Very interesting. I mean, as I said at the beginning, and as I told him, everything he shows up in, he just knocks it out of the park. Uh, definitely worth checking out Gaslit, where he plays G. Gordon Liddy. Uh, this past weekend, I binged the entire miniseries. Really enjoyed it. And you can as well just pop over to Stars and check out Gaslit. Uh, again, thanks to Shay for being on the program, and thanks to you for being here. Don't forget Story and Craft Pod. Dot com is where you can follow me on social media, sign up for the newsletter, and of course, you can send me a message. I really appreciate the notes that I've received recently and uh, appreciate you showing up for each episode. If you're new to the show, thank you for checking it out. Great shows to come. Uh, you have a great rest of your day. Whatever you got planned, be safe. Uh, have a good one, and I will see you right here next time for another episode of Story and Craft. That's it for this episode of Story and Craft. Join Mark next week for more conversation right here on Story and Craft. Story and Craft is a presentation of Mark Preston Productions, LLC. Executive producer is Mark Preston. Associate producer is Zachary Holden. Please rate and review Story and Craft on Apple Podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. You can subscribe to show updates and stay in the know. Just head to storyandcraftpod.com and sign up for the newsletter. I'm Emma Dillon. See you next time. And remember, keep telling your story.